Hello everyone, we will continue the layout designing part and in the previous video, we finished up to header details. Now we will come on to this portion. We will create a sub form and in that sub form, we will create four text fields. If you remember in the previous video we covered, Whenever you want to display a label and the corresponding value, we have to create text field. So I will create four text fields, one for creation date, one for username, one for time and one for document category. I will start with this part. So I will right click on the body page means our sales order page. I will insert a sub form. I'll just increase the width of the sub form and just decrease some height. I will just rename the sub form so that it will be easy to understand. This sub form is for header values. Now, inside this sub form, we will create four text fields. I will just select the sub form, insert standard, we will go for text field. I'll just drop this text field at the respective location. I will rename this particular text field. It is for creation. I will just put the proper description creation date. Now we need to bind the object because creation date is a value. And in the previous video, I already put so much stress that if you are unable to find something or if you lost somewhere in the layout, always you have to reset the palette locations. So this is the object. I'll simply put it on the top. If during your layout designing, you lost somewhere, you can simply reset the palette location, then you will be able to see the object. So creation date, we will bind. I will simply select our Adobe form. This is our internal table for VBAK. And for the creation date, we have the column name is ERDAT. I will simply select this. So we binded with this our ERDAT column. Similar way, I will insert now another text field. Insert another text field. I'll drop at the respective location. Now this text field is for username. I will firstly rename. This is the username. I will put the proper description, user name. Now I will bind the object property. So I'll simply go to the object, VBAK internal table. For username, we have ER now. So we bind it. Now I will insert another text field. Insert standard text field. I will drop at the respective location. I will rename this. This text field is for time. I'll just change that description to time. I will pass, pass the proper label. It is for time. Now I will bind the object property. So I'll simply choose internal table. For time we have ERZET. Now I will create another text field. Insert standard text field. 
I'll just drop at respective location. I will rename. This is for document category. I'll just increase the width so that I can put proper document category. I will bind the object property. Internal table and for this document category, we have the column name is VB time. So what we did, we created a sub form in that sub form, we created four text field and we binded with the particular field, we binded the object property. Now I will move on to fifth sub form. In the fifth sub form, I will only create a label that is only create a text, which is item details. I will save up to this level. This is save button. Now I will create another sub form. I'll just decrease the width of height of the sub form because I only want to display item details. I will rename the sub form. This is our item details title. Now inside this sub form, I will insert a text. I will give the text. The text is item details. Now we will go for sixth particular, sixth part of our Adobe form or PDF form. And here you will get lots of learning. Because this is a dynamic section of your Adobe form. Data should flow to your next particular page if number of items are increasing. And in this particular section, we will learn so many new points. Firstly, I want to display three columns of VBAK, POSNAR, NETWR, and WAERK. But if you see, if I will close this, if I will show you the internal table for VBAP, here we have four columns, but you only want to display three columns in the output. So there's no need to change in the interface. Interface is as it is, but you can do in your Adobe form itself, you can deactivate one column. So I'll just simply, this column, you do not want to display. So simply right click and set and go for deactivate. So we will only display these three columns. See, we are not changing the interface. Interface still we have four to four things. In the Adobe form itself, we are deactivating one column. Now you can go to layout. It is very, very important point here, how to display the item data in the form of table. So what you can do? Firstly, I will create a sub form, new sub form. I'll just increase the width. I'll just rename the sub form. This is your item values. So we will go for one shortcut here. And that is a very, very easy shortcut. How to display the item values. You can simply select this sub form. You all know in two to three days, two to three videos, two to three videos back, we covered, we have a specific view. Where is data view? Where your data resides. You want to display this internal table, this item internal table into this particular sub form. And you can see we have four columns in the internal table, but we deactivate one column. So only three columns are visible here. So what you can do, you can simply select this internal table and drop into this sub form. 
and you can see three columns automatically coming. So you are simply displaying this internal table into this subform. Now the most important point, two most important point. Now in this subform, whatever the data is there in, in this subform, it is a flowed data. It is a flowed data. So you have to change the property of this subform to flowed because it is not positioned. This particular subform data is flowed. So we have the we have to change the property. So what you can do, you can simply select your subform. You can see we have the object property. I'll show you. If you lost somewhere, I told you, you can reset the palette location, palette, workspace, reset palette locations. You can select your subform. This is your subform. Go to object. Now, you can see this particular subform rather than position, you have to set it to float. So this is the next thing what we did. Now, now viewer internal table LT underscore VBAP is displaying inside this particular subform. So for this internal table, you have to select the checkbox, allow page break within content. So what we did, our item data, item data is flowed in nature. So what we did, Whatever the item data you are displaying in a sub form, we created a sub form to display the item data. So we changed the property of the sub form to float. And this internal table, our LTVB AP internal table is inside this sub form. So we select the checkbox, allow page break within content. Means if content increasing, we are going for page break. So we did these two things. If you want your data to shift to next page, you have to set the property of that sub form to float and the internal table property you have to select, allow page break within content. So I'll just simply save this particular layout. I will close this particular thing and I will simply, simply activate my Adobe form and PDF based form. So what we learned in this particular video, we finished with all layout designing part. And the most important thing we learned about how to display the item data we created a sub form and we drag and drop the internal table inside that sub form. We change the property of the sub form to floor and we select the allow page break, allow page break within content that checkbox for our internal table. Rest part will continue in the next video. Thank you.